All right. So guys, today we're going to build on what we have been discussing, which is metabolism of lipids. But from there, we are going to go further and we are going to discuss the metabolism of cholesterol. And probably when you mention cholesterol, you may be wondering what is cholesterol. So cholesterol, what is it? So this is a hydrophobic molecule which has a steroid ring and it forms most of the cells. Most of the cells do have cholesterol in them, most animal cells. It forms some storage form of some lipids and it also works in many other functions in these cells. For example, it's necessary in the fluidity of the cells. The other uses in the cells we are going to discuss further. But one key thing is that cholesterol has a steroid ring, which I'm going to show you going forward. And this steroid ring is made up of four rings running from A, B, C, D. And we're going to show all that stuff here in order for you to understand what cholesterol is. So structure-wise, we have said that cholesterol has four rings. So at the end of the day, as we discuss the metabolism of cholesterol, what I want you to actually see is how this molecule is going to be synthesized, how this molecule is actually going to be synthesized, when is this going to be synthesized, and how it's going to be excreted. So this is what cholesterol would look like. It has a hydroxyl group at carbon number three. This is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not run in this direction. Five, six. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Making sure you confirm your key. So cholesterol has 27 carbons, a hydroxyl group at carbon number 3, a double bond at carbon number 5 and 6, a methyl group at carbon 19, carbon 19, and then it has a hydrocarbon of about 8 carbons attached on carbon number 17. Steroids would actually be molecules which contain such kind of a nucleus. This part here is referred to as the steroid nucleus. The steroid nucleus. All right, that's the steroid nucleus. This is the structure of cholesterol. The hydroxyl group carbon number three, double bond at carbon number five and six, and a hydrocarbon chain at carbon number 17. That's what cholesterol would look like. And today we want to discuss how is this molecule synthesized and when is it synthesized the most. 
You and I have already discussed prior about when you would expect synthesis of molecules to occur. But synthesis is mainly going to occur in a circumstance where somebody has consumed a lot of, or has consumed a meal, particularly a carbohydrate rich meal. You know, when you consume a carbohydrate rich meal, due to secretion of hormones such as insulin, that insulin is going to activate a number of hormones, a number of enzymes, particularly the phosphoprotein phosphatase, which will actually activate enzymes that will dephosphorylate, uh, that will actually dephosphorylate enzymes inside for cholesterol synthesis, fatty acid, acid synthesis, and so on and so forth. So when you consume a carbohydrate, due to the presence of insulin, hormones that lead to cholesterol synthesis are going to be activated. Particularly, you would see the committing enzyme to fatty acid synthesis, or cholesterol synthesis being activated. And that enzyme, you're going to see it on the third step of cholesterol synthesis. So this here, guys, is the structure of cholesterol. Cholesterol <coughs> would exist, exist in, in an esterified form. An esterified form. The esterified form of cholesterol would have a fatty acid attached on carbon number three. So when it has a fatty acid attached here, not a hydroxyl group, but a fatty acid, long chain fatty acid, it forms a cholesterol ester and it actually becomes even all the more hydrophobic. Cholesterol esters would be found in existence, but mostly cholesterol would exist in a free form as part of lipoproteins. And cholesterol would exist as part of the membranes of the cells where it works for increasing fluidity of those cells. What are the other functions of cholesterol, one may wonder? Some of the functions of cholesterol, apart from what we have said, which is to increase fluidity. Fluidity of cells, certain tissue, you find that cholesterol is also going to be necessary in the synthesis of most of the molecules that have a steroid ring, steroid nucleus. So you see that it's going to be present in most of the hormones, and those hormones which end in, in ways such as on or in e, like one usually they will actually be derivatives of cholesterol, progesterone, okay? The, most of the androgens, testosterone, those hormones would actually be produced from cholesterol, okay? So cholesterol is essential for production of steroid hormones. Production of steroid hormones would depend on cholesterol. Another thing is that cholesterol is a part of bile and bowel salts. Bowel, bowel salts, bowel acids, these molecules actually contain cholesterol and they are necessary in the digestion of lipids. Remember from the digestion of lipids, we talked about a circumstance where lipids cannot be effectively digested in the absence of bile because of the fact that they are highly nonpolar. But the presence of bile and bile salts would create a water lipid interface which will allow enzymes such as polypes to attach the lipid and then allow the other enzyme to work on it and digest the lipid completely. This is also why Enzymes such as the lipase may not function completely because in the mouth we don't have bowel. So presence of bowel it will work as an emulsifier and would help the complete digestion of these lipids. So this briefly is about the structure of cholesterol. So where does cholesterol come from? One by one in the body, where does cholesterol come from? Well, cholesterol tends to have three main sources. One of them is 
endogenous production of cholesterol from extrahepatic tissue. So tissues other than the liver are able to produce cholesterol. Other sources of cholesterol are hepatic sources where the liver works at the primary to synthesize cholesterol itself. The other, side of, the other source of cholesterol is dietary sources. So, as you consume most of these animal tissue, you are also consuming cholesterol. One may wonder now, does cholesterol also come from plants? I already told you that cholesterol, cholesterol in itself is a lipid found in animal tissue. However, there are some plant analogs of cholesterol. They are referred to as phytosterol, and these are poorly absorbed. Because they are poorly absorbed, the absorption of these ones would actually compete with the absorption of cholesterol. And if you are consuming meals that contain fat uh, analogs of cholesterol, these would tend to inhibit the entry of cholesterol in the body. You should also know that there is some level of balance between the synthesis of cholesterol, the uptake of cholesterol, and the excretion of cholesterol. Now, this is not very well balanced. And because it's not very well balanced, you find that if you're consuming a lot of cholesterol, or you're consuming cholesterol at times, when it's most likely to be produced, you discover that you tend to have a buildup of cholesterol, which could also end up uh, clogging through your veins and your arteries, leading to atherosclerosis, one of the conditions that could actually lead to other cardiovascular diseases. So, cholesterol consumption is one of the main sources of cholesterol. And de novo synthesis of cholesterol from the liver is the other source. You'd be pleased, pleased to know that the synthesis of cholesterol tends to happen the most during the night. And because it happens the most during the night, you get to discover that some of these drugs that are actually targeted against the production of cholesterol, such as the statins, would be administered at night. So if somebody asks you a question, why do you administer statins at night? It's because the production of cholesterol is at its height at night. Is that okay? So, absorption of cholesterol would happen mainly in the intestines. And this absorption is actually related to a certain protein which is referred to as the Neyman, the Neyman cook. The name I cook um, C1 like one protein. So this protein facilitates the entry of cholesterol. And because this protein works to increase the entry of cholesterol into the body, there are certain drugs that are also targeted against this protein to ensure that the absorption of cholesterol is slowed down. You and I know that an increase in cholesterol could lead to problems such as atherosclerosis. These drugs could be referred to as as a trisemide. Trisemide, as a trisemide. That's an example of those drugs that would work against the absorption of cholesterol. Now, now that you and I have a background on cholesterol, where it comes from, I also want to tell you how is cholesterol uh, gotten rid of. You'll be pleased to know that that steroid ring that you and I saw is synthesized from the body from acetyl-CoA primarily. Though it's synthesized de novo from acetyl-CoA, you would be surprised that in the excretion of this cholesterol, it cannot be completely broken down. The steroid ring does not get completely broken down in the cells of the body. In fact, this steroid ring is actually going to be either excreted and changed or it's going to be converted into something else, such as the bowel acids and the bowel salts. 
and is going to be excreted, enters into the intestines, assists in emulsification, some of it goes out, the other one can actually be further metabolized in the body. So though we are able to synthesize cholesterol, we cannot completely break down that cholesterol and produce acetyl-CoA or carbon dioxide and water out there. Now, how then is cholesterol synthesized? Remember, cholesterol will be synthesized primarily in the time when you have consumed a high carbohydrate rich meal, which will lead to insulin secretion and the series of reactions that would occur by now you probably know them. High amounts of carbohydrates will lead to glycolysis. Glycolysis